Hey guys, and welcome to part two of uh, quick terrain building inside of 3D Coat. In our first video uh, that I'll link up above, it's just kind of an intro into this idea of being able to use height maps to build a terrain and then apply those to a very low poly mesh. In this version, we're gonna go a little bit more into a higher quality final result and some flexibility using layers. So let's go ahead and get started. In this demo, I'm gonna go ahead and do this using the, the surface sculpting mode. And we'll start off with just a cube. All right, and let's increase the size of this cube. Okay, great. So now we're at about 67,000 triangles, which we're gonna need to increase this number. So uh, we could just sample this up. Okay, we're at 4 million right there. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go one more. Okay, great. We're at 18 million. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in and use our uh, brushes. So again, we can start with the absolute brush or the extrude brush, uh, whichever one you prefer. Let's go ahead and use the absolute brush first and make sure that in the e-panel you're using your stamp mode. I typically like this one because I like to position them as I'm placing them down. Uh, what I wanna do is look at my layers and make sure that um, I'm starting to build my terrain with layers uh, at the core. So this very empty layer, I'm just gonna go ahead and name this flat. So I know this gets me back to my flat position that we see here and I'll add a new layer and we'll call this, I guess just base is good for now. Perfect. And so now let's go ahead and pick a terrain that we're going to use for our base. Let's try this, this one right here. So we'll go ahead and just kind of click somewhere in the middle like so, and then just kind of drag that out. Yeah, maybe something like that. All right. And we can take a look. Now it looks a little severe, but that's okay. That's why we're working in layers. Um, I'll just go ahead to my depth layer here and I'll bring that down to maybe 60% uh, of that. Yeah, something like that looks good. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and start adding on to this. I'll add a new layer and uh, we'll start adding more features to it, uh, kind of like with larger peaks or something. So let's see what we got here. Um, that's too far over. So, okay, this is where the absolute brush may be a little bit more challenging. I think it's basing it off of the original flat layer, which is much lower. Uh, I think if you use the extrude brush, I think this is going to actually draw it right on top of what you currently have. So let's try that again. I'll bring, yeah, and you can see that that drops it right on top. Um, I don't like that so much. I think I want to get something with a, a better peak to it. Let's try this one. Um, now, all right, this one, I know this is a good peak, so we can just bring this guy in and we'll add him right here. There we go. Maybe I'll add another, another peak on the other side here. There we go. All right, excellent. And we can give this one a name. We'll call this Peaks. And now let's let's see if we can't make some valleys in here. So we can maybe take this guy. There's a couple of things that I want to do. I want to get rid of the borders. The borders look, it's got a very rectangular or squarish border. Um, that's because my falloff is really low. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the falloff on this guy. Pretty high, maybe like 40%. And then I'm going to press the Control key down. And we're going to see what kind of result we get. And that should be cutting in. Yep. Yeah, okay. So we'll just go ahead and kind of build on this. I really should have designed um, trenches and things like that that I could use. I wasn't thinking far ahead, far enough ahead. All right, so now we've got like this cavity area, this kind of canyon, lower canyon area, and it's a little, it's a little harsh. I would definitely say um, maybe I can broaden it up a little bit. Okay, got something like that, 
And we can always use our regular brushes to flatten things out. You can use like the chisel brush, for example. Kind of come in here and we can definitely uh, flatten some of this stuff out. Well, let's just add another layer here and see if we can't do something about this. I'll go ahead and just, I'm, I'm using my mouse. So my um, Wacom tablet's actually not connected right now. So hopefully this works okay. Just trying to get a little bit of a flatter base down in here. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to soften it up so much. Okay. Okay, there we go. All right, now I've got something pretty severe here. So um, I'll just call this or crevice, baby. All right, so what do we got? So we have something, there's a lot of detail here, a ton of detail. And um, now let's go ahead and see if we can't make some adjustments to this. So we can go back to, for example, the peaks and we can start to play with the depth on those so we can uh, change the height and lower them and something that makes the most sense. Uh, here's that section we just added with the um, creek so I can bring that back to where it started or start to make it a little bit more pronounced like so. And then even the base, if the base is a little bit too much, we can kind of start to bring the base down. But it just allows you the flexibility of using your layers to adjust things after the fact. So you don't have to get it right the first time. So now let's just go ahead and see if we can't get this onto a uh, mesh. So we'll go into orthographic, look at it from top down and jump into the uh, retopo room. All right, so now uh, just get your points to polys. And now uh, before you actually uh, do anything, make sure that you have auto snap on and that you're using snap to outer uh, surface. All right, so let's go ahead and drop some points. We'll just drop them near the corners. I won't go all the way down since I didn't really do anything to, to this section here. So I'll just capture the area that I want to capture. That's another nice thing too. Uh, so now we have four points, so we'll just hover somewhere in the middle and then right click. And now we've just dropped down a single poly. So we can go into perspective mode and just kind of take a look at this and see how it's how it's coming along. Uh, what we're going to do is subdivide this poly that we've just created. Make sure nothing's overhanging. Okay, I think it's fine. All right, so let's go ahead and start subdividing. So in your poly groups, go ahead and hit your subdivide button. And you can start to see your mesh is starting to conform to the, the, the terrain that we've just created. Uh, right now we're at 8,000 polys. I think we're going to go higher than that. All right, I'm starting to see some errors happening here. So let's undo really quick. I'm gonna clear that mesh and re redo it. So let's try it again. Maybe one thing I wanna do is, um, sometimes it actually helps just to switch this over to um, voxel mode. It makes sure that you don't have triangles that are embedded in each other or um, like gaps or holes. It fills everything up. So that's what I would do. I would just recommend jumping to, um, switching over from surface mode to voxel mode. It's gonna ask you if you wanna change its resolution. I would just leave it the same and hit okay. All right, it looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and try our um, projection again. So we'll go to orthographic, top down, and let's drop our points.
Okay, and we'll start subdividing and hopefully we get a better result. Okay, that, that's looking better already. Let's go one more. All right, now we're talking. We could just leave it. Honestly, we could just leave it at this point here, like this. Um, we're talking 32,000 polys. And let's just bake that and see what the result is. So we'll go to bake. And what we're going to do is we're going to bake with normal map and flat displacement. So we'll take a look, make sure that we don't have anything sticking through our mesh. Um, maybe this area here. So instead of increasing the, um, the scan depth, if everything else looks pretty good, go to specific areas and just kind of inflate them just by clicking on that area. It'll inflate it. I actually think it's pretty good. So let's just leave this alone now. And then uh, we can preview the inside, make sure nothing is really protruding through. It looks good. And let's generate. I would recommend increasing your texture width to like 8K. You could do 4K. I've, I've had good results with that as well, but I do 8K. And I would also do this initial subdivision by one level. So, and say, okay. The nice thing is if we're not happy with the result, we can always go back and rebake and we can increase the tessellation on the mesh uh, to get a more desired uh, result. But let's just see what this, this gives us. Okay, moment of truth. We'll go to paint room. Um, we'll hide our sculpt. And we've got a mesh. Look at that. Looks pretty good. Um, we're actually not even showing our displacement. This is just the normal maps. And we can definitely, let's add our displacement. Now it's going to be a little bit too sharp, but here's what it'll look like. Okay, that just picks up some of these peaks. So what I typically end up doing is uh, taking that normal map down, depending on what you're going to do with this. If you're going to render it with, with uh, subdivision and the displacement, then you don't really need the normal map. But I tend to take the normal map, take it down to like 15, 20%. And then that way I still have some of the features of the normal map, but I have all the proper um, uh, displacement on the mesh. And even though I'm not, I don't have a very high dense mesh. So for example, there's the mesh. That's the high version of the mesh. This is the actual original mesh that I'm capturing all the details on, but then I'm using this mesh here to preview the um, displacement map. Even this 62,000 triangles is still super low for a dense, for a very, uh, complex terrain such as this. All right, let's see how it renders. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of detail. I think that came out pretty good. All right, well, hopefully you found this um, handy and I haven't even started uh, running occlusions and curvatures and started to put put a smart material on top of this. But uh, yeah, this is um, This is part two of quick terrain building inside of 3d coat Hope that was helpful. Thanks guys